Alright guys, Red here. Welcome back to Red's Resort. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Aegis Avenger series. Now I know this is an important ship to a lot of people, so I'm going to be doing my very best to provide the most accurate and detailed information I can find. We're going to compare all the variants and see some of their strengths and weaknesses and do a little tour slash review along the way. Let's begin. Aegis Dynamics was founded from a merger between Earth-based Aegis Macrocomputing and Davian-based Dynamic Production Systems, with the explicit goal of constructing a naval spacecraft. The firm was favoured by Ivar Messer and thus grew to prominence during the First Tavaran War, and during the Messer era, Aegis craft became synonymous with the ruthless oppressive regime. The Avenger began its life serving dutifully as the premier frontline carrier plane of the late 20th century. Avengers racked up a number of impressive space-to-space -space victories in that era, but were ultimately supplanted by more manoeuvrable designs, like the Hornet. With space combat focusing more on skilled manoeuvring than pure weapon storage, the Avenger fell out of active duty with the military and was repurposed as the standard ship for advocacy and local law enforcement. Today, the military will still use the Avengers as trainers. The two-seat variant is a forgiving first spacecraft for new pilots. The current civilian model Avenger is marketed towards bounty hunters, with the second seat removed for direct access to the hold. Munition storage has also been replaced with traditional cargo hooks, and, perhaps most importantly, the standard exterior flight line ladder entry system has been replaced with an internalised solution that allows the pilot to more easily maintain control of access and egress. The Avenger ships are a series of single crew ships focused on either cargo or intercept functionality. Each variant is reasonably capable all round and performs well with a variety of tasks that can be found in the verse. On top of that, each has a reasonably unique feature that sets it apart from its other variants. The variants are the Titan, the Renegade, the Stalker and the Warlock. The Renegade variant is available to buy in-game from Lorval for just over a million Alpha UAC. This version is basically a reskin of the Avenger Titan, however, and the only difference are that it comes with a blue and gold colour scheme and that its starting weapons are different. It still has the size 3 gimbaled Mantis GT220 ballistic Gatlin on the front, but the two side mounts are now equipped with two size 2 gimbaled Greatsword ballistic cannons. As this is the only difference, we'll be skipping a full pass over of this version and treating the default Titan as being similar enough for our purposes here. With all that out of the way, let's get down to the hangar and review some ships. This is the Avenger Titan, and we will treat this as the default version. I will point out any differences between the variants as we go along, so unless I highlight a feature specifically, you should be safe to assume that it's the exact same as this variant. So first let's talk about the similarities. So the shape of the Avenger makes it a pretty distinct little thing. Its structure is the same on all three variants. It has this slightly bowed look, like it's arching over slightly. It's always reminded me of something that I've never quite been able to put my finger on. And I don't mean the space shuttle, as it does have this black bottom and white top as well as these ceramic plates that seem to cover parts of the frame. There's definitely an old schoolness to it, which I really like, and its lines are all very smooth with not much in the way of square parts, or anything that doesn't look very aerodynamic. Everything flows nicely down to the wingtips and under the belly. The cockpit is also very much embedded in a way that isn't going to intrude into any passing over air. That is, of course, apart from this. This is the Avenger's nose-mounted size 4 hardpoint, which invariably comes with a size 3 gimbaled Mantis Gatling. This can be swapped out to whatever you want, or it can be mounted with a fixed size 4 version of whatever weapon you choose. Coming around under the wing, there is a size 3 hardpoint on either side that can also be changed out to fixed variants. The Titan comes with a size 2 gimbaled badger on each wing as standard. Also under here we can see the missile hardpoints. All Titans come equipped with two size 3 missile hardpoints 
which let you carry two size 3 missiles, four size 2 or eight size 1 in total. Or whatever combination suits you really. Moving back to the cockpit, we can access the pilot's seat from here. We have a cool little ladder here with a nice animation to it. And also we have a pretty standard flip open cockpit canopy as well. We're just going to jump in here for a bit as the animation is a really nice one. And definitely has that entering a fighter plane kind of feel to it which I kind of like. The Avengers are reasonably unique and that with all variants apart from the Warlock, the pilot seat can be accessed from the ladder and through the back ramp, which does give you the option of a quick egress should the need arise. For landing gear, we haven't got anything too special, but I do like a good set of wheels, and these do have a nice sturdy look to them. As usual, CIG tends to get the engineering of such things quite spot on, and I find it makes them look very convincing indeed. There's some lights here, lining the body, and along the wingtips as well. Unfortunately, these don't seem to do much other than look really cool. The headlights seem to emanate from this port here, and since they just had a nice little polish, are actually pretty decent now too. As we start to move around the back, we can see the full form of the wings and the engine intakes start to take shape. It all sits together very well, and the winglets and the stabilizers all just accent it in the right way to give it that little bit extra spark of character. There's some hexagonal panelling across the wing here and some more black heat shielding across the spine as well. Overall, you couldn't really describe it as an aggressive looking ship I don't think and I don't know if it's the heat shielding or not giving it a sort of NASA feel but it has got a science and exploration sort of vibe to it. Possibly even a hint of commercial space travel in there as well. Coming around the rear we have this very wide, almost slot-like main thruster, which I find quite appealing and it suits the ship I think, as opposed to the usual cylindrical tubes you might see on a Drake ship for example. The far side is identical and perfectly symmetrical so there's nothing new to see there, and the layout of the exterior can be safely assigned to all three variants with no deviation in size or features at all. Coming inside, we will immediately start to encounter the major differences between the ships. It's got a pretty decent, very fast little ramp animation, nothing too crazy, but certainly efficient. In the back we can see there's actually a sizeable space back here that can hold 8 SCU of cargo. Obviously the Renegade can hold the same, and the other two variants can hold none. Internal storage for the Renegade and the Titan is, at the time of recording at least, still ASCU. Be aware this might change as the game moves forward so check the pinned comment or the internet in general to double check this. Both other variants have an internal storage of 0.65 SCU. As of now there's no internal components in any of the variants for you to interact with, but again that might change in the not too distant future. The component loadout sizes for all variants are exactly the same and that's two size 1 shields, a size 1 power plant, two size 1 coolers and a size 1 quantum drive. The layout is still kind of cool in here though, maybe showing its age a little but the functional aesthetic works really well in its favour. I like the colour scheme and the lighting and it looks like there will be decent access to storage when it finally comes along. Over here we have this tiny little step that pops out when you want to move through into the centre cabin. Moving on we have a pretty nifty little living area tucked in here. Unfortunately literally nothing works in here. There's no panel access etc but it does have a bed. So can't really complain since that's about the only functional and essential thing in most ships anyway. But still I'd say we've pulled off quite a little feat of engineering here given the space if I'm being honest. I mean a little gun rack would be cool perhaps, but I'd be going out my way to nitpick I think. Coming through here we have access to the pilot's chair. Again, nothing fancy, it is a pretty cool looking chair mind you, one of my favourites in fact. Definitely looks pretty comfy I'd say. And once in the cockpit, we can see a very unobstructed all round view, which is excellent. Both sides and above are exceptional really. Obviously you're screwed for seeing below you, but overall it's actually one of the better cockpits in the game 
let's start things up and have a listen. Aegis combat assist activated. Systems green. Front engines online. I mean, it's nothing to stand out. Kind of sounds exactly how you would expect it to sound. You know, quite quiet, efficient, nothing too overbearing or aggressive sounding. Then we come to the control panels. Here is where the Avenger for me kind of loses some points, unfortunately. They're certainly functional. We've got three MFDs here, which, I mean, isn't great. More would have been better, but they are front and centre with easy access and visibility at all times. But this whole thing here, and I don't really know how this has happened. I know the Titan has been in the game for quite some time and it does look like it's seriously needing a little love in here. Like some of these indicators look like they've been stretched and stuff. It's just, it's not up to snuff really. And I'm not really saying that the aesthetic in general should change, it should look sort of half rough and ready, definitely leaning towards the more functional, but it is the one thing about this ship that does let it down for me. But, like I say, it's functional, I mean the rest of it is so good at doing what it does, it just gets away with it to be honest. But I honestly can't wait for, a, you know, just a little work on this. Taking off, we can get a look at the landing gear animations. The description for the Titan reads, the Aegis Avenger Titan is the base variant of the Avenger. With the extra cargo space and the Avenger's tried and true combat abilities, the Titan is a light cargo hauler that's more than capable of handling itself in a fight. So, the main difference on the Titan and Renegade is that cargo bay in the back. This, coupled with the abundant interior storage, makes for a really nice ship for running some daily tasks in. It can haul a decent amount of loot if you're running bunkers or caves and the like. Obviously it would be perfect for doing deliveries or retrieval ops. Also, given its pretty decent weapons package, it can definitely hit back hard when the need arises. So definitely a consideration for PvE bounties and mercenary work. Be a great little ship for doing some drug smuggling and maybe for visiting Jump Town or moving the odd occasional high value cargo or salvage. You can also get a PTV in here, for any groundwork you might need to do. So you'd also get a hover quad, the dragonfly, the nox, and possibly the new X1 as well, allowing the Titan to overall cover a nice selection of missions and career paths in the verse. Next up is the Avenger Stalker. And as you can see, there really isn't much to go over here. The changes are pretty minimal, same overall design, the two side weapons have changed from laser repeaters to laser cannons on the stock loadout. The internal components have changed around a bit, but nothing of particular note really. All around a grade C, slightly worse power plant, but nothing worth worrying about. The main and perhaps most important difference is in the back. This version is touted as an interceptor, and what we have here is six containment pods to house the targets of said intercepts. The idea being that you take a bounty, you capture them alive, and transport them to a detention facility. Obviously though, this functionality is pretty much not available at this time because there's no way to hand over bounties. But you could still do a little roleplay I suppose, if you want to run around enforcing the law, or taking hostages, or you could just use them as cupboards I guess. For drugs, mostly. Mostly drugs. Apart from that though, everything else is exactly the same. There are some minor speed changes to the flight model, and we'll cover those in a bit. The description for the Stalker reads, The Aegis Avenger Stalker is a civilian light fighter that is popular among bounty hunters. It was initially the frontline carrier ship for the UEE Navy. Then it had a long and storied career as the standard patrol craft of the UEE Advocacy. Utilising its cargo hold for prisoner transport, the Avenger features a sturdy, reliable hull and the capacity for a larger than expected engine mount. So clearly the Stalker stands out simply for all those jail cells in the back. It will do a lot of things a Titan can do, 
roughly the same combat performance, so PvE bounties and most combat tasks are definitely still in. Handheld box delivery would still work obviously. It could definitely work as a daily driver for most tasks like bunker running and missing persons etc. Also, if you're willing to stretch your imagination a little bit then you're looking at a pretty cheap little dropship too. Again, just the addition of a little weapons rack and maybe some extra internal cargo and <laughs> this would actually be pretty perfect for dropping off squads behind enemy lines. And that brings us to the Avenger Warlock. As you can see again, not even so much as a lick of paint has changed between the versions, making my role in this comparison video seem rather questionable to be honest. It looks like this version runs with the two Omnisky size 2 laser cannons on the wings, which is the same as the Stalker. No real upgrade to stock components either, so again, we move on and accept that with the Avengers, it's what's inside that counts. And this one's actually no joke and turns this little ship into a bit of a force to be reckoned with. This whole rear section is now primarily dedicated to the Warlock's bearing Rep 8 EMP generator, which if you didn't know is capable of knocking out the electronics on other people's ships. The EMP has a radius of 750, a cooldown of 22 seconds and a charge time of 20 seconds. I'm not sure how this EMP compares to the EMP components on other ships. I get the feeling that this is pretty big, considering the Scorpius etc, but I could be missing something as usual. It just seems like a lot of space to have taken up. It is cool though, very nice to look at, however we have now lost the dual access to the pilot seat. If we come around to the front, we can see that we now have to always use these ladders for access. The Warlock still does retain its bed however, which is nice, and everything else is exactly the same as before, minus a door as that's been taken up by the EMP. The description reads, The Aegis Avenger Warlock is a light fighter outfitted with a bearing Rep 8 EMP capable of emitting a powerful electromagnetic wave to disable any electronics unfortunate enough to be within the blast radius. Now the benefits here are pretty decent, and that's especially true if you're looking for something specifically for combat purposes. Sure you could get some bodies and some boxes in the back, which does bring the versatility up a notch, but getting good with this EMP can really let the warlock punch way higher than its price tag would suggest. There's more though, like the Stalker, the ability to use this ship for team activities is definitely something to think about. Pairing this ship with a bigger cargo vessel and a friend would definitely open up some interesting PvP pirating options. Similarly, the Stalker and the Warlock working together in tandem would definitely make for a pretty solid little police response squad or bounty hunting team. At the end of the day, the Warlock's EMP opens up more options for pilots at the budget end of the scale, and options are always a good thing. And if combat is going to be your most prominent career path in game, then the Warlock has definitely got that extra something for when it's needed. So for handling, the Avenger is pretty middle of the road, its top speeds are excellent, and pretty much everything under boost is definitely outrageously good. When in space, it's actually very nimble and enjoyable to fly, and you'll have no trouble circling targets and avoiding collisions or even a little racing if you fancy. Nothing really bad to say here, in atmosphere things change quite significantly. Over a certain speed yaw basically becomes non-existent, and you will feel the ship trying to pull its nose back into the ship's current vector. This is completely normal and what you'd pretty much expect for its shape travelling through air. It does mean however that you have to change how you operate, and just like a fighter jet or plane, you will have to bank into turns then pitch to make the most out of each turn. I did find the roll to be a bit on the slow side for the Avenger though, so this makes this whole process feel a lot more sluggish than I'd have liked. Obviously, we're not on the level of say a Gladius or an Arrow here, but for its size I feel it should be able to pop into those rolls a lot faster, 
especially since yaw can only be used in small amounts. Nevertheless, once you get used to its particulars, this is actually really, really good fun to fly around. Under full afterburner, it can really scream along in atmosphere as well, and it feels a lot more stable in a straight line than other ships have flown. There are a few subtle differences between the variants. The Titan has the highest SCM speed, followed by the Stalker and then the Warlock. There really isn't much in this though. The Stalker and the Warlock have the highest top speeds at 1307 and 1306 respectively, and the Titan follows up with 1113. The Titan however claws a little back by having a slightly higher pitch yaw and roll speed. The Warlock comes in last here, but there's only really one or two points in it. The only other significant difference is the Stalker has a bigger thrust capacitor, by a pretty decent amount, 1800 to 1500 for the other two. Given all that, the Avenger comes out performing pretty average for its size, but I feel it makes up for that by slightly overperforming when under boost. If this is a starter ship for you, or if you're just trying to source the best version for getting jobs done around the verse, I honestly don't think you'll be disappointed with the flight characteristics presented here on any of the three models. Combat, out of all the features available with the Titan, the combat is kind of that underlying skeletal structure that everything else hangs from. This is the case for a lot of ships in the game obviously, but when you're looking for a new ship and an image of the Avenger pops up, the first thing most people see is that massive gatling hanging from the nose. It's also called the Avenger as well, so I mean, the implication of violence is pretty obvious to be honest, and thankfully, that actually bears through to reality. With my own loadout and upgraded shields, I was able to do very high risk targets without much hassle, and this goes for all versions, as you're barely going to notice much difference between them. Now, I'm by no means a skilled pilot, but obviously your mileage may vary depending on experience and overall server FPS, which can determine the level of resistance the enemy AI can put up. The Avengers have enough manoeuvrability and firepower to cut through pretty much anything that crosses your path. Obviously, if you come up against anything too big like an M2 or an Andromeda, then you're gonna need to be pretty careful in your approach, but with some practice you should be able to use the Avengers movement speed to stay out of the lines of fire. For PvP, this doesn't really make the cut to be honest. Sure, if you want to try some PvP bounties, and you can catch someone out, or maybe they're on a less agile ship, sure. But generally, if you come up against someone who knows what they're doing, or someone in any of the many, many ships that outclass the Avenger, you're going to be in big trouble pretty quick. The Avenger is around a C tier for PvP, so that puts quite a lot of ships in a bracket above it on that particular ladder. And that's generally down to its pretty slow turn rate compared to other ships. On top of that, it's actually pretty big, so as soon as that shield pops, it's pretty hard to miss. In general then, there's not that much bad stuff to say about the Avenger series. It's really got the whole package, and that's whether you're new to the game or a long time player. It's also very unique in its design language as well, it's got that old earth aesthetic. You know, there's a bit of legacy in there, a bit of heritage which is a nice little nod to our own real life space age, albeit with some newly acquired teeth for the journey out into the stars, and those teeth are by no means underwhelming, and if you're looking for a small ship to explore and have fun while simultaneously being able to handle any flight combat related tasks, this is definitely worth considering. If I had to choose one model that would suit the most all round type of gameplay, and that would definitely be the Titan variant. With that extra cargo space, obviously, you're afforded a lot more varied gameplay options. On top of that, the ability to take a ground vehicle for bunker approaches etc is pretty hard to pass up. On the other hand, if I was to pick one based solely on the need for combat, I would take the Warlock out of the bunch. The EMP definitely would come in handy now and then, and could make for some pretty good tactical gameplay. Price to performance, I think it's pretty safe to say that even at the high end of just over a million for the Warlock, 
is actually mostly good value and being able to pick up the Titan for a mere 800,000 is a no-brainer really. However, when you start to compare it to other ships, it becomes a little harder to score it so high. For example, you can pick up a Nomad for under a million as well, and that has nearly the same firepower, triple the cargo capacity, and a fair bit more shields. It's obviously very user dependent, and definitely weighs heavily on what the intended use cases would be. But the Cutter, the Pisces, the Mustang and Aurora are all a lot cheaper, and that goes as low as 250k for the Mustang Alpha. You can pick up the Tana and the 325A for a little bit more than a Titan, and these all come with their own positive and negatives. And you might be thinking most of those ships aren't comparable, especially in the combat department. But in reality, ships like the 325A, the Mustang and the new Saulin are all on equal footing with the Avenger in pure combat terms, and that includes PvP. In fact, the Aurora can even be considered a B-tier PvP ship, and will absolutely shit in your pocket if you underestimate it. The Nomad, the Tana and the Pisces are definitely worse at combat than the Avenger though, so it's definitely a big mixed bag, and it's hard for me to say that this is better than that. But if I'm grading things in terms of pure versatility versus price to performance, things become easier. Comparing with the Titan variant in particular, it comes out sort of middle of the road. The cutter is a couple of hundred thousand cheaper, but it carries less cargo and isn't comparable in a fight. The Aurora is a few hundred thousand cheaper again, but to gain that combat advantage over the Titan, you'd need to take the Legionnaire variant, and that only carries 3 SCU of cargo. The Pisces is half the price of the Titan, but it also carries half the cargo and is worse in combat. The Mustangs have the same issue as the Aurora, where you have to pick between having a decent fighter, some cargo or a bed, essentially. 100 series just isn't worth mentioning because of how bad it is at combat. 325A is kind of cool, it's comparable combat-wise with a couple of extra missiles, and half the cargo for just under a million. Then we've got the Nomad sitting just under a million with slightly worse combat performance, but with 24 SEU of cargo. So out of that bunch, I'd give the Titan about a high 8 actually. I'd give the Warlock about a 6, cause God only knows why that costs over a million. I'd give the Stalker a 7, cause it's still pretty cheap at 880k, and it could serve as a half decent troop transport, and the Renegade a 7 because although it's a clone of the Titan, it's also over a million and it's only got a new paint job. But you know, the extra 200 grand might be worth it if you prefer the paint over the white one, so it's up to you. Speaking of paints by the way, the Avenger is one of the few ships with in-game purchasable paints. In Cousin Crows you can pick up the olive green and the splinter versions for 46,500 Alpha UAC each, which is a rare little bonus. For a loadout, I generally go with laser cannons, so a size 4 on the nose and size 3 Omni Skies on the wings. The shields get swapped out to FR66s and the QT drive to an Atlas. If you're feeling flush, you can swap out the power plants and coolers for military parts, and that would be the JS300 and the Glaciers. Bear in mind however, this isn't at all necessary, but does give the components slightly more health. However, that things like this might change significantly in the future, and if you notice any deviation from any of the stats etc, please let me know so we can get them in a pinned comment and let people know. Also, I read just yesterday that the stealth parameters for ships and components has all been reworked and I'm guessing that was for a PTU version of the game, so that'll be dropping into the actual game soon. So possibly a stealth build would work, but you'll have to experiment with that yourself. And that's it guys, thank you so much for watching. A big thank you to my channel members, Nils Gerdes and Spacecraft for their generous support. If you've got any friends looking to get into Star Citizen, or are thinking of getting involved yourself, please use one of the codes on screen now to net yourself some extra starting credits when the game goes live. Remember to like and subscribe if you enjoyed the content. 07 guys.